Hi, how are you? I hope you are having an awesome day. Today's video, we're just gonna paint a beginner mandala on a four inch canvas. You can get these uh, on Amazon, Hobby Lobby, Michaels. What I did to prep was just paint this with a black base coat. You can use regular acrylic paint or satin acrylic. I use chalk paint just because that's what I prefer, but really whatever kind of paint you'd like, you can prep it, prep your canvas with that. We're gonna need dotting tools and we're gonna need a divider stencil. I'm using an eight point divider stencil. This has actually 16 segments, but we're only gonna use eight of them. Um, and then we're gonna try out our liner brushes uh, I am a beginner at this too, so this is a perfect project if you are familiar with dotting but not so familiar with the brushes. I think this is going to be a great project to kind of get started. We're going to use the zero round and the five liner. This is the Jerry Q set. This is so super cheap. This was on Amazon. I'll link it below but you get a ton of brushes for very, uh, it's very affordable. Uh, and we're just gonna be using these two. We're using the smaller ones because it's a small canvas and you don't need to use the big honkin' ones that really hold a lot of paint for a tiny little canvas. All right, so let's just jump right in. First thing we need to prep our palette. And one of the best things about dotting is, or any, abstract acrylic, really any abstract art, is you just get to wake up in the morning and pick whatever colors you want to work with. It's really exciting. So if I had done this project tomorrow, I bet I'd have picked different colors because that's kind of the, you know, the beauty of this is you really get to explore colors. Uh, okay, so pick two colors that excite you they don't have to be these two colors. Pick whatever colors you wanna work with. Pick a metallic and pick white. So this is gonna be your highlight color. This is going to be your metallic kind of flash color. And then these two colors are gonna be the ones that you want to work with for this day. Could be green, blue, whatever. Today I'm filling these two colors and I want to check if they mix together. Let's, let's check it out. I think that they will because they're both warm colors. So we'll see. Let's set up our palette. First step is absolutely shake your paint. If you don't shake the paint, all the pigments settle down at the bottom and you'll get cracking and all kinds of not fun stuff. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, okay, I'm gonna take a lot of that violet. Now I'm gonna take this yellow and I'm gonna go right here. We're gonna take some of that and then just a little bit less. All right, now what I'm gonna do is take a tiny amount here and we're gonna mix it together and see what it, what color happens. Okay, let's see what we get. Ooh. Okay, so that's like a salmon color. Okay, so I know that those can mix, which is Great. All right, so that was half and half. Now I'm going to put a tiny bit of purple in the yellow and then a tiny bit of yellow in the purple. And now let's see, actually I'm gonna put more. Okay, let's see what colors we get now. Oh, okay. So this is kind of like a rose pink. Okay, that's, that's really pretty. 
And now, let's see what color we get here. It should be like a light peach. Wow, okay. Well, that is exciting. Okay, so this is a nice, so this goes from yellow to like a peach, to a rose peach, to then like a pink, and then down to that uh, that beautiful violet color. This is a really exciting palette. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some white. It's gonna be my highlight color. And this gold, this is a uh, bright gold. So it's nice and warm and super flashy. Now this is golden paint. This is more expensive, but to me it's so worth it. It's just, um, it's really lustrous gold. All right, we've got our palette set up. Now let's get our canvas prepped. So I'm taking my 16 line canvas and the way to line this up is it's pretty easy. So you pay attention to these lines here. And what you want is the same amount of space that's hanging out on all the sides. You look at it straight on, see? And that will tell you right away where the center point is on your canvas. All right, so then we're going to trace and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and trace all the lines. You never know when you might need them. Okay, so I have my compass. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna think about this design for a second. Where do we want our circles to land? So I think I'm gonna have a smaller center dot. Oops. And then I think my inside mandala is going to hit to right about here. This is where I'm gonna keep all of my dots, right in this section. Then I'm using brushes and they really do spread that paint out pretty far. So my next plan is to, I'm going to put a circle right here. And now I'm going to add maybe, um, oops, maybe a quarter of an inch out from that. And then we're gonna offset another quarter of an inch. I'm not using a Lazy Susan's today. I would usually use one, but figure we're just gonna go with that one. And then another quarter of an inch out. That should be absolutely enough. Now there is a dot. There's a hole in the middle of your canvas. Just breathe through it. It's fine. Paint will cover it. It's no big whoop, I promise. All right, so let's just get into it. First thing we're gonna do is let's pick uh, a larger size. So the greatest thing about my tool set is the warm colors are the small sizes and the cool colors are the larger sizes. So whenever you want to grab a large size, you're gonna pick from one of these. Well, these really. If you need a small size, you're gonna pick from those. And um, so we're gonna do the purple. So we're gonna start with number 12. This is gonna be our center dot. And let's go with gold. So when you get the paint on the end of your tool, this is what we're looking for. You don't want to have it go too high unless you want it to squish out. That could be you know, something that you would want. But really just enough to coat the end of your tool. 
And then paying attention to the center, what you want to do is just place this right in the middle of that circle. And lift up. Now notice this dot goes more this way. What you can do is just squish it, squish it around until it is center. All right. And we're going to work on that center dot. I'm going to take my stylus tool. This one has a very fine tip. And we're just going to go like this. And smooth out the edge. You can take some of the paint that pulls in the middle and move it out. Sometimes these center dots just work on the first try and sometimes they need a little massaging to get them exactly right and that's okay. Alright, so now we've got the paint in the center and I'm just gonna let this dry because there was actually a step that I skipped that's a pretty important step and that is to wipe the canvas before we get started dotting so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna hook back up once it's dry and do that simple step okay okay I just could not wait for that to dry I have patience problems so we're just gonna go in and just lightly be careful not to hit that wet paint so far this is going really well we're just gonna wipe off the excess chalk. Why am I doing this? Well, because those little chalk particles can affect how your dots lay down on the canvas. So as long as you can still see the lines, we're good. Just be careful not to hit wet paint. And yeah. Okay, so the first thing, you're a beginner and let me tell you something that I wish someone had told me when I first started dotting. Stay away from the tiny sizes. You really don't need to be using these yet. Just stay away from the smaller sizes. They're hard to do and you can get a beautiful looking center without using those. So the first tool we're going to use, so red and orange, let's just get those out of the way for a second. So the next size up is yellow. See how easy that was? So we're going to go with number five and let's pick, uh, let's pick white. So what you want to do is place the end of your tool into the paint and let's place a dot at each one of these um, four, like a crosshair. Uh, the north, south, east, and west. Now let's place a dot at northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to try and fit this dot in between those two dots. You can check and make sure, okay, it looks like it's gonna fit all the way around, but I am going to be safe. I'm not going to, cause sometimes the paint can squish out. So we're just gonna use the number four. That's still not as tiny, uh, a tiny size. So we're gonna go right in between those two using the yellow. And just be careful and Place it gently in between those two white dots. To this line. Okay, so now we're going to work on right the dots in the row next to those yellow dots. So I'm going to pick the next size up. So I was using a number four, so I know I need my yellow tool because that's red, orange, yellow. 
and we're going to use number five. That's the next size. And this time we're going to use the next darkest color, which is that pretty peach color, and just place a dot in the next row next to that yellow. Okay, so now that we have those dots done, we need to put a dot into these spaces. So let's use number six, that's the next size up, and let's use that pretty salmon color. So that's the next, uh, the next darkest color, and let's just place a dot in between those two dots. This is looking like sherbet. Cool. Okay. So notice that there is space in between each dot and that's good because that means we're going to have space to go in and add detail dots later. And now for the, uh, now for my next trick, let's see, we're using a six. Let's go up to the next color. Tool is going to be red, orange, yellow, green. See how easy that is? All right. So now we're going to use the pink color. That's the shade in between these two. That's our new mixed shade. And we're going to go right next to that salmon color. So Okay, now we have one space left. And we're going to use, we were using seven. Let's jump to number eight and we'll use that violet color. And this is going to go in the north, north, east, east. Yeah, just in those spaces in between. You, once this is dry, we're going to let this dry and then I can show you how you can add detail in here and make it look uh, a lot more advanced than it really is. What we're going to do though, we have to let this dry. So the reason for that is um, if you make a mistake on the tiny uh, dots in between those spaces, if you make a mistake and your paint is still wet, it's very difficult to go in and remove those dots once it, uh, when it's still wet. When it's dry, you have so much more control over taking out mistake dots, and it's just a lot easier to fix a boo-boo. So we're gonna let this, we're gonna focus on patience, Rachel, I'm talking to myself, and let this dry, and I promise I will this time let it dry, and I will be back once this is dry and we'll work on adding some detail. Okay, so we are back and that took about 20 minutes for the paint to dry. And you can see it's flattened out because it is fluid acrylic paint. Deco art just dries nice and flat. Um, now we're gonna get into the brush portion of this. I highly recommend getting some black paper, just a scrap pad that you can practice your brush strokes on. Just get. This is drawing paper and honestly, look, this this was $3.99 Hobby Lobby. This is Master's Touch. This is like their house brand. They have 40% off sales all the time. So you could get this for like, you know, $3.00. I don't know, 40% off of that. So awesome. Okay, so we're gonna get, and this is not for some finished work because it's for drawing. So it's not, it's going to buckle when we add paint to it. <clears throat> but honestly, we're just trying to have a piece of paper so that we can practice out <clears throat> our brush strokes before we get to the canvas, just so that we are comfortable with that. Um, this is not going to be anything that we're going to, you know, frame. It's for practice. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is let's get our five liner. 
and I want to start with a gold brush stroke. What I'm going to do is we're going to work on north and then northeast, east, and we're going to do every other line all the way around. Now let's just grab some paint and practice. We're going to do a straight petal. One thing you want to know before you do your brush stroke is where you're going to start and where you're going to end. You need to know those two points. So you want to know those two points on your grid before you place the line because what that's going to do is it's going to tell you, okay, you start here, pull back, and then you're going to lift at that point. And you can see I am wobbly right now. It tells you when you need to taper your brush up. If you don't have an end point, you could either, um, you know, you might go too long or you might stop too short. This also will give you a good idea of how thick your petal is going to be when you load up your brush. How much paint you have on the end of your brush really matters. Okay, so I feel confident right about here is where I want to go. I want to have that much pressure and my the muscles in my hand have memorized that amount of pressure. And so now I'm going to take that to the canvas. Let's start. Now this is a really um, important line. What I do is I start on one that's less important uh, because you really, your eye is going to be drawn to these lines depending on how you hang it. But I'm just going to go with one of the less important lines. I'm going to start here. And I'm going to end here. Let's see, I'm going to end right in the middle there. Okay. And actually, let's go ahead and draw a circle. You can use um, the center part of your center dot throughout the process of painting. It's total fair game. So we're going to end on this circle. All right. So we're starting here. We're starting here and we're ending there. Okay. Let's get some paint on our brush. Push down, pull back, and then lift. All right. I'm going to do the same thing here. Know where the start and end of our line is. Okay, every other line. So we're going to skip this one and now we're going to do this one. Push down, lift up. Now some of you might ask if I have done this one before, and I have not. So the greatest thing about, another one of the great things about dot painting and painting mandalas is it's a journey that you go on. And you kind of, um, you have less control over, you don't know what the final piece is going to look like. Now see this, see how there was some drift? the petal started to get wider. This was my first one. So I'm going to go over it now with that, my confident brush stroke. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right in the middle, right there and end right here and have a slight curve to the stroke. There's a little note from editing Rachel. The next few minutes of video were unfocused. It's clearly unclear. So I'm going to go through, a, first off I'm going to have a talk with the camera person because clearly she was not focused on focusing. But if you are following along, I want you to know that there's plenty of brush stroke footage from here. Uh, you know, we did the yellow. We're then going to do a shorter stroke of the orange. Look, practicing on paper first. It's so good. 
Okay, so it was right around here. We're using those peach strokes. They're a little bit shorter. So I completely apologize for that. Right now we're gonna get back into the focused section of the video. That was the only time that it was out of focus. The rest of the video is fine. But yeah, let's, let's just get right back into it. Okay. Now it is okay that the, where your brush leaves the canvas, it's okay that that's a little bit sloppy. I'll show you a fix for that at the end. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how we clean that up. Okay, so now that we've done that peach color, we're gonna move on to that rose color, kind of the pink, and we're gonna do the same thing except we're gonna drop it down half, half a line and do the same exact thing. Okay, we're gonna go with a clean brush and then just use a little tiny bit because we're just going a small distance. So you just need a little bit of paint on the end. And we're gonna go from here to there, okay? Ooh, that's really pretty. All right. Okay, so now to finish off this flower shape, I'm just gonna use a stylus tool because it's such a small dif distance that uh, a brush really would kind of be overkill. And we're just gonna complete that shape. So just at the bottom here. Okay, now we're gonna do something really bold. We're gonna go from this outer circle all the way in, so right before it hits this dot. So we're gonna go from here to there with one of these violet strokes, all right? And you want to just make sure you have enough space in between, it looks like we do. So let's just go ahead without even practicing. Why not? Okay, we're gonna start here. Push down, pull back, and up. Okay, and then we're gonna go every other line. So right in between those flowers. Push down the bristles, let the bristles work for you, and then pull up. Pay special attention to when you lift the brush. Ooh, that looks cool. Hopefully you can see my hand is shaking and wobbling, but the fact that I'm pushing the bristles down and making them work for me, that totally helps. Okay, wow, that's exciting, right? Okay, cool. Okay, now let's add some detail dots in the center of this mandala. I will be using the number two tool and I'm gonna place gold dots in the spaces in between. So like we'll be placing the dots, this space right here, right here. It's gonna be in between this first row of dots and the second row of dots using the number two tool in 
gold. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll make sure that it is the same amount of paint, like you're not really uh, soaking that paint or soaking the tip in the paint because you can get a small size dot or large size dot depending on the amount of paint that you have on the end of your tool. Hold your tool perpendicular to the canvas and that'll make sure that you have a nice round dot. Okay. Okay, now we're going to place a dot in between on either side of these two dots and we're going to use uh, let's use gold. Let's just, and then we're going to use the next size up from two, which is orange number three. It's pretty awesome that you don't have to search through a million tools to find the right size. It's just going to be the next color in the rainbow. All right. Okay, so we were using number three, now let's use the next size up, number four, and we're going to use gold and place the dot in between on either side of these larger dots on the outside row. Okay, so here comes the fun part. We're going to add top dots. And in order to keep this video under two hours, I'm going to do time lapse. But I'll tell you the formula. What you want to do is for all these dots that are on the inside section, pick the next shade lighter than the shade that you have here. So for example, if I am going to place a top dot on this one, on the violet shade, I'm going to use that pink color. If I'm going to place a dot on top of this pink color, I'm going to use this peach. And so forth and so on, just kind of adding the next lightest tint of that color on top in the smaller size tool. How do you know what tool to use? You take a tool and you dry fit it. So. You want to account for a small amount of squish. All right, so for these tiny dots, we know we're gonna use a warm tool color. So for these, I would use a two, and that one may be a one, right? Dry fit your tool, see what fits. Let's try this one. I'm gonna guess it's an orange, let's just check. So yeah, see how that number four fits right there perfectly? And then it's too small here, too small there, perfect fit there. So if we need a larger size, this is orange, red, orange, yellow is the next size up. And look, that one fits just right. So that's the formula. I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this so it doesn't take a million years and I will catch you on the flip side. Okay, so now just looking at this, I'm seeing where some, there are some empty spaces where I could add detail dots. So if you see these two gold dots, I could probably add two number one dots and then one number one dot there. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to use white because I think that'll be a nice highlight color. So two dots here, one dot there, it will fit. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that in time lapse, and I will catch you later. Okay, so here we are. We've got that center part detailed and filled in. And now what we're going to do, see how each of these 
flowers has a bit of um, where all the brush strokes kind of ended up. See how it's a little bit messy. Sometimes they they don't connect and they kind of, there's space in between. It's, you know, it still looks nice, but here's a little cheat way that you can clean it up. So get a big tool. I've got my number eight tool and it's gonna look like you had planned this the entire time, which, you know, we did not. So you just get some paint on the end of your tool and then we're gonna place a dot right at the bottom of each of these flowers and see how that just kind of cleans up that section, cleans it up. No one has to know what's underneath that dot and it's just a more finished look than if you showed where the brush strokes met up. And you can obviously use whatever size dot you want here. But look at how nice that finishes that off. It's a little hack. Now let's try a different technique to clean up this petal. Let's use a stylus tool with a ball end that's going to make a big enough dot to kind of hide the end of the tail on this petal. I'm gonna use this pretty a pink color. So cover the end of your stylus tool with paint and then we're going to place a dot at the end of the petal and then taper those dots into the petal shape. And let's do that with each one of the petals. It, what it does is it cleans up that tail if maybe it has a little curve on the end or it tapers a little too weirdly. It just cleans it up. Okay, so at the end what I like to do is add that center dot. I dry fit the tool. You want to make sure that you have a tool small enough to account for a little bit of squish. So that looks good to me. And for the center I want to keep it light. So I'm going to start with this peach color and then go lighter from there. All right, so then you have to make sure that that dries before you apply the next color. And there's a bubble in there, so you just pop that. And we're gonna let that dry, and then we'll add the next lightest color after that's dry. Okay, we are back and everything is dry, so I'm gonna just dry fit the tool. I see that number eight works well. So now we're gonna go right in the center with the yellow. And now we're gonna let that dry. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and add some white dots to these. Just highlight those. I think that looks really nice. Okay, now that that is dry, let's go over it with a white dot right in the center. All right, and now the last step is to let's let it dry and we're gonna come in and erase all the guide marks and add some varnish. Okay, so now everything has dried you can see that everything is nice and ready to be cleaned up. We're gonna clean up all those chalk lines with a damp cloth. It helps if the cloth is lint, as lint-free as possible. And then just wipe over the chalk lines and remove all of them before we varnish. So here is something really helpful. Remember what paint you used for your base coat because during the course of dotting what you'll find is you'll have paint smudge or like little drips here and there 
And if you remember what paint you used for your base paint, it's super easy to go over those with that same paint and just erase all of those extra little uh, mess ups. So here it is, the final piece. Isn't it just so exciting? We're learning brushes. Oh, so fun. So let's add it to our beginner mandala walla. Those two other mandalas are beginner tutorials on this channel. So if you're just starting dotting, I would love to have you join me. Thank you so much for watching today. Until next time, bye.